G'day folks and welcome back to Bex Basics. One of the things we're always thinking about in the garden is how to control pests and diseases. Now not all insects in the garden are bad for your garden. Things like ladybugs, they're great for the garden. You want to attract as many of them into the garden as you can. Bees, of course, fantastic for the garden. You want to attract as many of them into the garden as you can. Uh, so we need to be careful when we're um, trying to control pests and diseases in the garden that we do it in a manner that's not going to damage those um, insects that we want to keep in the garden uh, because a lot of those particularly ladybugs uh, and other uh, similar insects they actually help to control some of the the uh, pesky insects that are around things like aphids um, you know, ladybugs will eat those uh, so we want to be careful that we don't damage those we want to be careful that we're not uh, spraying things around that are going to kill the bees for example we want to be really careful of that because if you don't have any bees pollinating your your um, fruit and vegetables then you're not going to get any fruit and vegetables um, so I want to talk to you today about eight different ways uh, to keep pests and diseases at bay in your garden without damaging those uh, those other beneficial insects and doing it in a natural way without having to use harsh chemicals um, and doing it uh, in a lot of cases with uh, you know items and materials that you have around the house. So let's have a look at some of those but stick around to the end because I wanted to give you a very very important tip around all of these methods that's vital to know and if you don't follow this um, this piece of advice it can be very damaging to your garden. Now before we go as well if you're liking the videos on this channel please subscribe to our channel hit the like button so we can help to um, to get the word out to more people because the algorithm will help us to do that so hit the subscribe button give us a like now let's have a look at uh, controlling pests and diseases in the garden okay so the first thing I want to talk about is aphids now you can see here little aphid eggs here just right there little sort of light brown aphid eggs you can also see the little black nymphs there as well a good sign that you've got aphids is if you have ants crawling around like that because they like to milk the the aphids and uh, farm them a little bit so let's talk about how how to get rid of aphids because what they can do is as you can see they by the sort of white along here they can sup, suck the sap out of your um, uh, vegetables and eventually uh, kill those leaves which is detrimental to the plant so let's talk about how to get rid of them okay now so for aphids and actually for most um, insects that you get on your plants in the garden uh, this remedy will work to help to dislodge them and get rid of them so all you need is a spray bottle that we're going to put some water in and some dish soap now you want to make sure you've got um, an organic or a very natural uh, type of dish soap that's got as few additives in it as you can preferably no additives because you want you're spraying this on your plants so you really don't want to have any additives so all we've done we've done is we've put some water into the bottom of this uh, spray bottle now we're just going to put a few drops of dish soap in there we just put the lid back on okay, lid screwed back on and just give that a little bit of a shake just like that and then all we need to do is take that and spray it directly onto the leaves. Now, the preference is to do this slowly um, and to spray in the evening. Uh, and the reason for that is that you don't want to be burning your the leaves of your plants. So you've got detergent or soap in the bottom of or in this water, and you don't want them that to burn your plants. So it's a good idea to do this gradually, and that's what I mean by slowly. Just Add a few drops at a time um, and spray it on a couple of leaves to begin with to make sure that you're not going to burn them you know just to spray the the leaves just slightly first maybe do one um, one evening and uh, see if it burns the plants uh, because you don't want to do the whole plant and then discover that you've you've burnt the whole thing but particularly with aphids and a lot of bugs they hide underneath so you want to make sure you get underneath the leaves give them a spray do that in the evening and then once the uh, the morning comes along you want to then go ahead and rinse it off just water rinse it off the plants rinse it off because that sort of that rinses off the soap off the plants and um, stops them from uh, from burning what will happen particularly with um, with aphids or, or any of those sort of soft um, 
soft insects they'll just die almost instantly and so what you, you're doing there with the water is you're just really rinsing them off you're rinsing the soap off at the same time in the morning so spray in the evening um, you won't get um, uh, as much burn on your plants if you spray in the evening you won't get the hot sun that's sort of penetrating through the through the um, the soap and then rinsing it off in the morning uh, will help to not only get rid of the bugs but also to uh, to rinse that soap off and so that's effective on on pests now let's have a think about diseases so carrots in particular like these ones here they're prone to a disease called powdery mildew um, and you'll notice that if you're getting it because you, you I haven't got it on this plant but you'll see it um, the, the, the leaves will just start to get a little bit dull and start to get sort of a white powdery uh, texture on the leaves um, and so that's a very very easy thing to get rid of well, let's have a look on what you do so again we've got our trusty spray bottle with some water in it but this time we have bicarb soda uh, now for uh, this little bottle here it's about 500 mils um, well about 500 mils is what the water I've got in there we only need a little bit in there so generally four liters of water about a teaspoon of bicarb so we only need a little bit in this bottle so we've just got water in the bottom the bicarb in there again lid on or sprayer on and we just twist that lid on now make sure you stay around to the end of this video for the tip on mixing uh, these remedies together. It's very important that you do that. So we've just shaken that up then uh, and again with this make sure that you're testing it on your plants uh, a little bit first just so just a little bit test it on one of the leaves first leave that uh, until the next day and make sure it doesn't um, it doesn't burn the plants or otherwise detrimentally affect them uh, but once you're sure that your mixture is right and it's not going to hurt the particular plant you're uh, spraying it on because each plant is different all plants um, have different amounts of sensitivity but once you're, you're sure that uh, it's right for your particular plants you can just go ahead and spray them spray them all over this is for things like powdery mildew and other fungal diseases spray them all over and again that's in the evening that we're doing that and then we come back in the morning and again rinse it off with just some water it's a good idea to do this because it just means you've got a nice um, you know fresh leaf you don't have the leaves that are hindered or um, otherwise you know coated in anything so they can breathe properly and you're getting them uh, growing normally so that's how you look after um, your plants if they have fungal diseases on them okay now let's have a look at fruit fly you can see we have tomatoes here um, just starting to set fruit um, and very very attractive for, to fruit fly so let's talk about how we can keep fruit fly from getting into your tomatoes or any other fruit for that matter so all you need for this remedy is a drink bottle just an individual sized drink bottle some white vinegar and a little bit of wire so all you need to do is take your uh, bottle once it's emptied you just chop the top of it off turn it inside out and pop it in there just squeeze it in there a little bit so it's nice and secure take a piece of wire and wrap it around here like that and just put a hook over it I'll show you why it's got a hook over it in a minute then you get your apple cider vinegar and just pour a little bit of that into your bottle doesn't need a lot just a little bit in the bottom and we come back to our tomato plants where we've got a trellis take our little this is our fruit fly trap and just hang it over the trellis like that and what will happen is the fruit fly will be attracted to the smell of the vinegar because it smells kind of like um, fermenting fruit um, they'll be attracted they'll come down into this hole they'll be uh, swimming uh, flying around in here they won't be able to get back up because of the the way that's configured now and they'll just drown in this vinegar and they'll be attracted to that rather than to our tomatoes and so that's how you stop um, fruit fly from attacking your fruit of any kind okay now let's now talk about slugs and snails here we are with our lovely silver bit uh, seedlings any type of seedlings this relates to prime candidates for slugs and snails to come along and just munch on those and just they'll be gone overnight but one thing that slugs and snails hate is coffee grounds 
Now these are used coffee grounds. You need to use used coffee grounds rather than fresh coffee grounds uh, because what happens is that um, uh, fresh coffee grounds are very acidic um, and once they've had the water run through them, uh, the, uh, the acid acidity is reduced and so it's not gonna change the acidity of your soil. Coffee grounds are actually very, very good for your soil, used coffee grounds. They're really good for your soil structure, but they're especially good for keeping slugs and snails away because they don't like to crawl over it. So all you do is you just take some of those and form a barrier around your plant with those coffee grounds. You can put it on stick as you like because they don't like it and it's good for the soil anyway. Just put it around your plants, all around them, and that will just keep the, the uh, slugs and snails away from them. The next thing to protect your plants and your seedlings in particular from slugs and snails is eggshells. Uh, because they're rough and uh, very sharp, slugs and snails don't like to crawl over the top of those. So you just save your uh, eggshells, just take them, crush them up in your hand, crush them up, spread them around your seedlings, like so. And the snails and slugs won't crawl over the top of them because they're too sharp for them. And while we're on the subject of slugs and snails, the other thing you can do is to make what's called a bear trap. Now this is just not a bear trap. Uh, we're not catching bears, we're catching slugs and snails. So it's just a beer trap, so it's made with beer. So all you do is you just take a container of some description, it can be a yogurt container, it can be the bottom, I've just cut the bottom of, of a drink uh, container off. Uh, you just get that, and all you do is you bury this in uh, the ground up, up to this level, and then you just pour the beer in it. You just bury that in the ground like so, so that the level of the ground is even with the top of the, of the container. And what will happen is that the slugs and snails are very attracted to that. They'll just crawl in into that and they'll just drown in there. Um, and they'll be attracted by it anyway. So in the morning you'll, be, you'll come out and you'll find you know, slugs and snails around. You can just pick them up and you can just feed them to the chickens or the birds or, or whatever you want to do with them. But uh, that's another way that you can actually stop uh, slugs and snails from eating your seedlings. Okay, now let's talk about these little critters. Caterpillars. Now this is a white butterfly caterpillar. Uh, I've just pulled this off my uh, tomato plant and they can be very devastating to your tomatoes. They can do this to them. Just eat the tops right out of them. I know this one only looks very little, but they grow very, very quickly and they eat really, really fast. Uh, now the trick is not to try and kill the um, the caterpillars although if you find caterpillars like this on your plants you want to you want to remove it but the trick is to actually keep the white butterflies that are actually laying these or any other um, insect that's laying these on your plants you want to try and keep it off your plants so let's talk about a couple of ways to do that now strangely enough one of the things that you can use is actually flour uh, for some reason white butterflies don't actually like white uh, and so they'll be deterred by it but this is also really good for keeping um, the caterpillars at bay as well, and crickets for that matter. Uh, because what happens is that if you sprinkle um, some flour on your plants, uh, then if the, the crickets or the caterpillars eat, eat it, it sort of gums up their mouths and uh, it makes them die. So all you do is you grab some of the flour. So you just grab some flour in your hand like that. And all you've got to do is just sprinkle it over the plant. It'll stay on the leaves like that. White, cat, uh, white butterflies don't like it and it'll keep them away and even if they do manage to lay some, some eggs on there or if you've got caterpillars on there they'll, they'll end up eating the, the, um, the flower and it'll gum them up and it'll die so what it'll do is it'll stop them from causing too much damage uh, they'll only last for a very short time and same thing with the, with the crickets and then the last line of defence, netting now this is not bird netting, this is just um, nylon netting that I've bought from the, um, from the fabric stock. But I've deliberately bought it because I use it for two separate purposes, um, which means that I get you know, twice as much bang for my buck. Uh, this is really good netting to use to stop the, um, the butterflies and other things um, getting to the plants and uh, laying their eggs so that there are caterpillars. But I also use it as shade cloth as well and that's why it's doubled up here. But it's important when you're using um, netting to make sure that you've got a very fine 
net and that's so that animals don't get caught in it. Um, I've had issues before with animals getting caught in, in uh, bird netting before with bigger holes and it's really devastating for the plant and for the animal. So netting is really good to keep them keep the, uh, the white butterflies and other butterflies away, anything that's going to lay um, eggs on there. It'll also keep the crickets away. If you're looking to keep crickets out then you'll need to you know, close up the ends so that uh, they can't get in. I usually like to keep the ends open so the bees can get in. You might get the odd uh, butterfly in there but, but it's not too bad. Uh, but it's important particularly when you've got um, plants that are flowering like this tomato's uh, got flowering, uh, flowers, flowers on it. So I need the bees to get in there. So I'll uh, make sure that I take that off every now and then and uh, use things like the flower as well to, uh, to keep, the, keep the caterpillars at bay and to keep the white butterflies away as well. Now let's talk about that last really important tip. So we've talked about using bicarb and dishwashing liquid or dish soap in water to, to spray uh, plants to keep uh, fungal diseases and uh, pests away. Some people even use uh, vinegar as well. I prefer not to use vinegar. I find that it actually burns the plants. Um, you could probably use a very watered down version, but I prefer not to use that. But this is the important part. You must never mix these things together and spray at the same time. Mixing anything together can have a chemical reaction and they can, they can work together and become extremely uh, harmful for your plants. I've done it before where I've thought, oh, I'll just save some time and I'll mix a couple of things together, you know, that, that uh, attack different things, something that uh, will, will uh, address leaf curl on peach trees and I'll address the aphids at the same time and I've mixed them together and sprayed the tree at the same time and nearly killed the tree. So make sure that you don't do it together don't mix these products together in the same um, bottle or the same container and spray your trees at the same time. Make sure you do it separately. If you have diseases that you need or pests that you need to control on the same plant, then do it at least a couple of days apart and make sure that you rinse off the previous product first before you spray the next um, item. It's really important. You're spending a lot of time um, working really hard in your garden you don't want to damage them or, or kill anything in worst case scenario by mixing things just to save some time. Take the time, give them a couple of days in between, rinse off in between so that your plants get the room to, to um, breathe and that you're rinsing off the old products first so that you're not uh, mixing those and getting a chemical reaction that's going to be damaging to your, to your plants. So there you go, eight ways to keep uh, pests and diseases away from your plants without using harsh chemicals. Thanks for joining us on Beck's Basics and we'll see you next time.